<laughs> Good. Good. It seems like uh, you guys yes. showed some stuff with Mike Sainer still on <laughs> Saturday, lining him up in the backfield. Is he a guy who you can get the ball to in multiple ways? Yeah, we're just like I said, you know, from the start, we're personnel driven offense. So, you know, when our, when our best playmakers uh, step up, we're going to find creative roles, whether that's, um, you know, putting guys in the backfield, flexing them out. Um, everybody has to learn the offense conceptually here. The running backs have got to know what the receivers are doing. The receivers got to know what the running backs are doing. And so um, we will be very advantageous to be able to create matchups, um, try to, you know, create, you know, favorable matchups for us by getting our best players involved um, however we can do it. And so uh, um, that was just a small little taste a small little glimpse uh, and then uh, we'll keep can continue to build and uh, keep developing our players and put them in the best position to be successful overall how do you feel the offense uh, did and just you know coming in from the install and from beginning to end I'm really pleased I I'm just you know I'm fortunate just for the kids that we have and the coaches that we have uh, first and foremost our assistant coaches did a really good job um, you know, installing the offense throughout the spring, making sure our kids came out prepared for practice. And our kids did a really good job developing themselves. You know, you look at the progress um, from really practice one where it was completely brand new to them and it was kind of a little bit eye-opening uh, to this last practice and just to see our growth offensively. Um, and one of the things that was really exciting to see some of the things that some people may perceive as challenges for us with the lack of depth that we had in a number of different positions, uh, but seeing other guys step up and, and have success. And so, um, you know, overall from a a schematic standpoint everyone had to learn the offense and uh, you know there was no excuses um, there was no setbacks you know we rolled out there we, we continue to get better each and every day um, and uh, it really showed throughout the spring so I'm really excited um, now our challenge is going to be to continue this momentum throughout the summer um, that way we don't take a step back when we come back in the fall we continue uh, taking steps forward to, to take this offense where we want to take it how will you look at that challenge of working the, the other weapons that were out this spring back in come fall? Well, you know, I think we did a number of different things this spring to kind of put on tape as far as create our, our library. And, and when we've got that library of plays, it's easy now to go back and teach on that because we've got the film, we've got the plays on tape. Uh, and so it's really just a plug and play sit, uh, situation where, you know, overall schematically, you know, we've got the concepts, we've got the plays, our kids understand what we want to accomplish out of those plays. Uh, and now we're just plugging and playing the different, the different players back in to it and so uh, you know it's unfortunate the players that we did have out you know they missed a lot from a development standpoint um, they were able to learn offensively but they didn't uh, they missed a lot from a development so um, we've got to catch those guys up individually within each every every position group make sure we develop their skill set to, to allow them to go out and be successful but if they if they just play within the framework of the offense and trust the details and trust the coaches uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be in position to be successful you get the full install in or as much as you wanted to this spring or is there still more on the way yeah i would say probably about 90 percent of it is in you know there's some things that we kind of held back um, and, and, you know, the hard thing is it's so challenging, which is really good. Going against our defense is phenomenal in practice um, just because, you know, how well our defense has played here throughout the years, um, the number of, uh, uh, you know, the number of challenging things that uh, Coach Brown presents. Um, so there's things that we were able to install that we maybe kind of scaled back on because they weren't necessarily good versus our defense. That'll be great versus other defenses. Um, you know, that's one of the challenges here is you see everything, which makes us better. Um, and it really kind of solidified our offense because there's things that our defense create, creates problems for that you've got to have answers. Um, and so you really feel great when you go against our defensive practice and you're able to solve, you know, your own problems in practice. And so um, we've got about 90% of our offense installed. Um, there's things that we'll major in um, that we didn't quite get a chance to major in this spring um, just because of the different things that we go against in practice. And uh, um, But I feel really good about where we are from our foundation standpoint. Our kids have done an unbelievable job executing the offense, and I'm excited uh, as we move forward. Do you change that 10%, I guess, based on like what doesn't work against this defense at all? Or? You know, that, that other 10% will just be things that, you know, we'll just be able to add. You know, some things that we kind of, we took a, uh, took an approach to where we didn't need to install everything. That other 10% can be multiple. We left out a lot of formations this spring. Um, you know, I was carrying out our formations. Uh, I was looking through our formations yesterday, and there were still some things that we left out, you know, from that standpoint. And so we can, we can add and we can continue to build. One of the things that, uh, that, to our advantage in this offense is the flexibility. Um, you know, this offense is what I call like a mutt of a dog. You know, it's kind of – it's the pretty dog walking down the road that you're trying to figure out what kind of – kind of dog is it and, and and for us we do a little bit of everything and so um, on offense there's times when we can pick and choose what we do 
Um, and that's, that's hard and, and, and challenging for defenses to be able to prepare for us um, with the number of different things that we do. And so um, we pick and choose what we do and what we major in and the emphasis of uh, you know, whether or not who we're playing each week to allow our kids to, to give them the correct game plan to be successful. How long did it take for things to click for these guys? You know, I, I would say, you know, it would still, uh, things clicked um, probably about three or four practices in, you know, where you could tell they, they had to, uh, uh, they stopped learning or they stopped had to think, thinking uh, and, and they were able to go out and execute. You know, the game slowed down for them. Um, and really kind of, you know, you look at the development of our quarterback position and just, you know, how well the, uh, they came along. And at first it was all completely new. So, you know, there was a lot of learning moments. You know, there were a lot of teaching moments. Like I said, um, you know, the challenge going against our defense is uh, there's oftentimes there's guys moving around all over the field, you know, and you look at the average defense you're going to go in throughout the year. They're, they're going to be a four down. They're going to be a static front, you know, it's static coverage. Our defense presents a number of different challenges. So, you know, once we were able to apply our rules and they were able to learn the installs and then learn uh, the rules going against our defense, you, you were able to see a lot of uh, successful plays happen in that standpoint. And so, uh, you know, I would say about four or five practices in, um, you know, we get, kind of got over the, uh, the hump of the learning curve and we're able to kind of go out and execute uh, at a really high level. And, and the neat thing is the kids overall understanding what you want them, what you want them to get done out of each and every play, understanding the strengths of the plays, also understanding the weaknesses to get us out of negative plays. I mean, what you say that you're personnel driven and everything, but having guys like Shea and Dylan, how much do they make your job easier to kind of do with what you want to do? Oh, uh, they make it so easy. Just, you know, their skill set. Uh, you know, I think you, when you look at all the quarterbacks, even Joe, um, just the versatility that they have, not only as throwers, runners, um, they're very smart. They got quick releases. Um, they can make any throw on the field. They can get the ball out of their hands. And so uh, we were very creative this spring with the number of things we asked those guys to do. Um, you know, whether it's putting the defense in conflict by run pass options, whether it's, you know, putting them in conflict by quarterback runs. Um, we were able to get a lot of good stuff done this, this spring um, with the development of our quarterbacks. And it's been pretty exciting, um, just the inventory of plays that we have um, and things we'll be able to fall back on once the season comes around. What is it in particular with Shea's skill set that, that works well in this offense? You know, I think Shea's, uh, you know, he's a really smart uh, quarterback. He starts understanding and grasping the offense. Um, there was a few times this spring where um, he got us out of some negative plays by his overall understanding of, you know, what the weakness of certain plays would be when the defense would blitz one way. He checked us out of some other plays and really um, did an unbelievable job commanding the offense. Um, but when you look at his skill set individually, he's got a quick release, um, something that's very effective and efficient in the RPO game. Um, he's got a softball that he can, you know, that uh, that he can place ball placement anywhere and on the field. And so, uh, you know, to me, he's a, he's a complete guy. He can also create plays with his feet as, you know, he often did last year. And so I'm really excited about Shea and his development. Um, he's comfortable in this offense, um, as he stated. Um, and, and he's also, he's very passionate. Shea has a lot of me inside of him. We're two passionate people. Um, he often shows it in plays. It, you know, if, if he overthrows a guy, you know, he's got a certain demeanor about him after it. If he makes a big play, he's jumping. Uh, and that's what I like. You know, it, it's, it's driven inside of him. You know, he's got that passion, that energy inside of him to be great. Uh, and when you have that leadership qualities, uh, you make other people better around you, and he does. What is it about this defense that makes it such a good test for your offense? Uh, just a number of different things that they present, you know, from uh, being in three down personnel to four down personnel to uh, there's guys constantly moving. I mean, you, you may you may have a three down front, but there's, you know, there's six guys walking around in the back end and then they hit it on the run. And of course, uh, as Coach Brown always states, you know, he solves his, uh, he solves his problem by, aggressive, by aggressiveness. And so uh, constantly blitzing, you know, and, uh, you know, we just don't face a base defense, which most defenses are most base. But what we, what we do on defense has led our defense to be successful, um, you know, throughout a number of years. And when you look at Coach Brown's track record, I would argue he's the best defensive coordinator in the country. Um, he's constantly produced top defenses year in and year out, no matter where he's been. And so when you get a chance to install your offense and go against that each and every day, um, it just makes you better. It really is iron sharpening iron. Um, and we were able to kind of um, you know, figure out some of the weaknesses of things that we were doing 
um, you know, create uh, uh, um, create um, rules for that to be able to make us stronger. And when you can do that in a practice setting um, to be able to make yourself better and make yourself stronger, you ultimately put your team in the best position to be successful. So um, it's a great uh, – I remember always all the headaches Coach Brown would present when you game plan against them. Uh, imagine doing that for 15 practices and then figuring out what works, how you can be successful, uh, and that just makes you better as an overall team. I'd imagine – you learn how to call plays by calling plays in a game. Have you had a chance in scrimmages, you know, throughout this practice to work on that yourself? Yeah, it's it's been uh, it, it's been great. Just you know, how many call it periods um, that we call, you know, in practice. Every day we're calling plays off the script in practice. Uh, I called the whole spring game for not a script, you know, and that's how I do practice. And so, um, you know, we don't need a script. I got the plays in my head. This is my offense. I know what I want to call. I know what I want to accomplish. Um, but we do a number of different periods in practice where we call it, uh, which is really good situations, whether it's two minute backed up, uh, red zone, short yardage. Um, we don't script half of practice. We just call it on the field and run plays. And so uh, it's really neat because the, the players also understand as a play caller what I like to call in those situations. And we'll often watch those plays together on offense so I can explain to them what I was thinking, okay, uh, you know, so they can think like me. And the more they have a thought process like me, um, it allows them to be comfortable. It allows them to go out and be successful. Now that you have time with a, a good percentage of your team, you know, does the recruiting strategies change based on what you have and based on what you need going forward? You know, I just think we're always going to uh, try to recruit the best and brightest student athletes we can to Ann Arbor. You know, obviously there's a type of student athlete that we want to recruit here, not only from an athletic brand, but from an academic brand. But, uh, uh, you know, we're looking, you know, to just keep continue to maximize our talent. Um, and, and I think one of the advantages for us necessarily as we go out recruiting now uh, in the spring is having seen some of the mid-years that came in here and what those guys look like. When you, when you look at uh, Mikey and you look at Eric Gall, those guys look different on our field, you know, just from their skill set. Those two guys have done extremely well this spring being mid-years along with Kate McNamara. Uh, and I'm just talking, you know, skill guys from that standpoint. So, you know, you always want to continue to try to recruit um, at a higher level at the previous years that you've done. And so, um, you know, when you've got mid-year freshmen that come in and they've been able to make a, an immediate impact um, and, and now I'm creating roles for those guys on offense. You want to continue to try to recruit to that model. And so, uh, um, you know, we're just continuing to go out there and just find the best student athletes we can that fit our system. Obviously, we do a number of different things from an offensive standpoint. So uh, there's not a certain guy that we're looking for. We like to always have a variety of guys. Um, and, and most importantly, we build our offense around the talent that we have. And so, uh, you know, we'll, we'll make sure that we, we build it to their strength uh, to be able to put us in position to, to win games. You obviously had this, you know, goal in mind or <clears throat> opportunity in mind for a while. You had it this spring. It was your first chance to have it. What was it like personally to, to be able to run the whole thing? I mean, not just college yeah. like Angel said, but the whole the whole offense. Oh, it was it was uh, it was amazing. Just you know, each and every day coming to work, working with these guys, and uh, working with our staff. Um, you know, I never realized until you're in that seat how much it controls your brain. I mean, there's often times I would go home and I'm texting my own self so I don't forget my own thoughts, you know. And so, uh, you know, at midnight or 1 o'clock in the morning, I can't wait to watch the film the next morning. You know, I can't wait to go over. So, I mean, every day to me has been like living on cloud nine. I mean, it's just, it's just it's been a dream, you know, just all the work and the preparation that it's taken to get to this point. Now to be able to run, uh, run my own offense and, and kind of be in charge from that standpoint, my brain doesn't stop thinking about the next play or we need to run this, we need to run that. Oftentimes it maybe clutters up everyone else's brain because I'm moving so much faster at that point. But uh, it's been exciting just to be able to go out and, you know, see the kids have success and, and being able to put them in position to be successful, um, but also have them being able to understand how I think thinking and, and, and trying to develop a culture where we think alike um, so we can all go out and execute, you know, um, fundamentally right. You, you, you've, been, Go ahead. Uh, you've been in some pretty high-powered places the last few years. Is that aspect of it, that, that uh, added responsibility, maybe something that sets this place apart so far? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily know if it's an added responsibility, but an added level of confidence for me. Um, and just confidence in our preparation and what we're doing offensively. Um, you know, when you look at this offense, it's really the best of all the last places that I've been. Um, and that's when I say it's that mud, it's that mixture um, of the best of, of a lot of offenses that I've been in. I've been fortunate enough to be around some pretty good offenses. I've uh, been fortunate enough to have some pretty good players that I've been around. And so, um, you know, I truly believe in what we're doing offensively um, because I've seen it be successful. 
um, and it's been successful in a number of different places um, of what we do offensively. And so the kids were able to go out and see that, and they were able to go out and execute. Um, and so, you know, that gives me an added level of confidence that if they just trust uh, in their coaches and they trust within the framework of the offense, uh, that we got great coaches on our staff with a number of different um, backgrounds, guys that have, you know, won national championships, guys that have competed for championships, guys that have won conference championships, you name it. When you look at our offensive coaching staff, um, we have the experience, we have the, uh, the developers of talent that we have within our uh, individual position coaches and it's our job to go out and put the kids in position to be successful and so uh, there's no egos in the room offensively there's no egos on our on our team offensively and everyone's uh, committed together to, to, to build the best offense we can uh, and put our kids in position to win. Jim said a couple guys might be back by the very end of practice did you get a chance to see like a Christian Turner or even what Nico can do? Yeah, uh, Christian was able to come back uh, towards the end, and obviously we were able to see him early on. And, uh, you know, he's such an explosive player as a runner. I mean, he's uh, he's often a guy that some, the, the message for me to, to Christian is slow down sometimes. You know, everything doesn't have to be so fast. Um, and so I'm excited about the skill set that he brings um, just from his explosive nature as a running back. Um, he's got great vision, balance, and body control, everything that you need to be an elite running back. Um, and so I'm really excited about, um, you know, when we get him back, Back fully, um, just Coach uh, Jay Harwell being able to take his development to the next level uh, and make him an elite player. And then, you know, I was fortunate to see Nico get back out there yesterday. Nico did some ind individual drills, and uh, to see a big kid like that being able to sink his hips and stick his foot in the ground and transition, um, that just made my spring just finish off the right way, being able to get him back in Indy and how excited I am about him and his development. Obviously, um, he missed quite a bit, a big chunk of, uh, of Indy, and so um, I've got to catch him up now, you know, and he's got to catch himself up uh, throughout the summer. But uh, obviously, people were able to see the talented player he is. I think he can be an elite receiver. I really do believe in that, uh, and I'm excited um, to get a chance to work with him now when we get back in the fall and take his game to the next level. This is your offense. Is is Jim like? What is the interaction with, with Jim? I mean, how much? Are, is there an interplay, or is this you and he's there to kind of chime in? Coach Harbaugh has been has been amazing to me. Just the support that he's given our offense. He hasn't been involved at all. Um, he hasn't stepped in, and I think that's one of the greatest attributes of a great head coach. Um, is his willingness. And, and let me say this: a lot of people have put a lot of questions and comments out there in, in the spring. Um, this is a sign of what great head coaches do. They're willing to uh, to change. And, um, you know, I don't think Coach Harbaugh has ever been labeled one way as a head coach. I mean, his offenses at Stanford were different than the offenses he had at San Francisco. Um, you look at what he was able to do when he had Colin Kaepernick and how he changed and evolved um, the NFL with the quarterback read game stuff. And so um, he hasn't been labeled just as one way as, an, as a head coach. Um, and, and this is another uh, example. Um, you know, obviously switching things over offensively. Um, there were some spread elements in the offense in the past, um, but he has given us full authority. This is our offense. Like I said, this is not my offense. This is our offense. I want every kid to feel like this is their offense on our, on our team. This is not about Josh Gaddis and what I'm running. This is not about, uh, you know, the offense changing from the year past. Yes, is it different? Yes, it's completely different um, than what's been run in the past. Um, I brought this offense in, and I've allowed everybody to have a have a piece of it. But uh, he does not get involved with the offense, and he's really given me the freedom. He's given me the authority uh, to run it the way we seem uh, necessary and put our kids in position to be successful. And uh, um, that's truly a great attribute of his. And, and um, as being the head coach and, and being the CEO of the program, uh, he felt like he's doing what's best to put our kids in position to win. Usually when you hear about a, a an offense protecting a defense. It's this, the crunching, time consuming, all that kind of thing. In what ways can the offense that you run protect the defense? Well, first and foremost, um, the first thing we talk about is dictating this, the uh, tempo of the game. And when we talk about dictating the tempo of the game, it's not necessarily about the time of possession. To me on offense, when we talk about dictating the tempo of the game, it's applying pressure on the opposing defense. They must stop us every time that we're going to have to go out there and score. And it's also putting pressure on the opposing offense that if they don't go out and score every time, that they're going to fall behind the change. And so from an aggressive standpoint on offense, we want to put the other opposing team defensively and offensive in conflict that when they face us and they face this brand of football on Michigan offense that every possession matters to them and obviously coach Brown is going to lead our defense 
And one of the advantages of being an offense coordinator here is you know you're going to get the ball back. Our defense is going to play extremely well, um, and he's going to get this ball back, and it's our job to go out and score. And so the three things we talk about, uh, the things that we want to dictate is we want to dictate the tempo of the, tempo of the game. We want to dictate the style of play, keep a physical brand of football, um, but also have spread elements. And then we want to dictate the aggressiveness of the defense. And, and if we can dictate those three things throughout a game and limit how aggressive an opposing defense can be, but also put stress on them that we're going to score in every series. And if they don't stop us, uh, the opposing offense is going to feel pressure to go out and, and they're going to make mistakes versus our defense. And so not necessarily are we looking at it from a time of possession standpoint. Uh, we're looking at it about the impact that we can make throughout the game. Um, but we won't go extremely fast. We'll protect our defense. Um, but if we're going fast, we better be scoring. And if we're scoring points, we're ultimately putting our team in position to be successful. And I know our defense will go out and continue to play at an extremely high level. I do not have one concern about the effect of the offense that we have affecting our defense. We will do whatever it takes offensively to put our team in position to be successful. So if there's times that we need to go slow, we will go slow. If there's times we need to go fast, we'll go fast. But most importantly, now we have an offense and a defense that's going to be able to apply pressure uh, on the opposing team throughout the game. All right, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Absolutely.